...traveling the globe to experience the cultures and the cuisine that have affected the way we eat in Britain. After a pilgrimage through the wilds of Alaska to taste sustainable salmon, I made my way to the heart of Middle Eastern cuisine in Israel. Now I'm in Vietnam to experience everything from the country's most exotic food to dishes that have been popping up in sandwich shops across the UK. After a whistle-stop tour in the north of Vietnam, I travelled south to the metropolis that is Ho Chi Minh City. Once known as Saigon, this is considered to be the most westernised city in the country. Saigon became a household name during the Vietnam War, but this city's history goes back a lot further than that. Architecture reminders of 100 years of French occupation can be found all over the country. And some of the food also has a European flavour. Thank you very much. When our friends from the channel came here, they bought the baguettes and they would fill those with ham and pickle. The Vietnamese clearly fell in love with it and they do their version now, which has pork and pickled vegetables and all sorts of lovely things and herbs. One hour southwest of Ho Chi Minh, my next stop was the most fertile agricultural region in Vietnam. That is the main road from Ho Chi Minh City to the Mekong Delta and this is your average Vietnamese roadside services but just take a look at this. Where would you see anything like this on any motorway cafe in the UK? They can do absolutely anything with rice here. As I travelled further into the Mekong Delta, rice fields started to take over the landscape. Not so surprising considering this area accounts for 80% of Vietnam's rice production. To explain how important this area is to Vietnam, just think about this. Vietnam has an area roughly half the size of England given over to rice production. And this year they think they'll even top Thailand as the world's biggest rice exporter. And curiously, the humble duck plays an important role in the Vietnamese rice cultivation. The Vietnamese philosophy is waste not, want not. And these ducks will eat all the spare rice after the paddy field's been cleared. All their poo then fertilises the paddy, so next year they get perfect rice again. Hey boss, how are you? How are you? Nice to see you. Once I reached the river, I met up with local guide Nia, who explained more about the importance of rice in the Vietnamese diet. Rice clearly is very important in the Mekong Delta. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about it. Our breakfast for farmers, yeah. they all bring rice to the rice paddy, and lunch and dinner for every Vietnamese people, every day. We never miss rice in a day. The Vietnamese call rice white gold, and they use it in everything from noodle dishes to the iconic spring roll. I'm a massive fan of the spring roll, I love them. You're right, I'm me too, okay? And you said that not only in Vietnam, and spring roll is also very popular in the world. And the spring roll is the 30th most popular dish in the world. Really? Out of four, first 28. Is it? And what about English dishes? Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure Nia gets his stats from. But it's clear that life here revolves around this fertile stretch of land fed by the Mekong River. This is Kai Bay Market. Now the 15 floating markets on the Mekong Delta, this one is the oldest. Just look at this. This is where you come to get your fruit and veg. And every boat has a pole on. On that pole you put what you're selling. It's the original shop sign. I decided to pick up a cucumber with a view to making some spring rolls later. And next on the shopping list was rice paper. And all that is, is just ground rice and water and steam for about, I don't know, two minutes maximum. But what I love about this place is, nothing is wasted. This is the husk from the rice. It's used to fuel, to get the fire, to get the steam. Now, also underneath here, they've got the ash, which you put back onto the paddy fields to fertilise them. And over here, they make rice wine. It truly is an astounding crop. And next door, they were busy making popped rice. Another alternative to eat at the movies? Well, not exactly. This is a typical Vietnamese sweet snack. The rice is popped, then sugared and cut into pieces. It's bagged up and sold down the market for around 60 pence. And with this production line, they knock out about 3,000 units per day. Now back to my rice paper. After being prepared and dried in the sun, I took it along to my final destination. A Mekong restaurant that serves up a classic local dish. 
The elephant ear fish is a real delicacy in this area, and this restaurant serves it up real fresh. Whilst the fish is cleaned, it's a simple matter of frying it. That's been cooking for about five minutes on one side, then flipped over, it's in hot oil. But what happens is the scales go really crunchy. Look at this here. That's a part of the dish. Look at this. This is a, a Mekong Delta stove. You won't see this anywhere else in the world. Very clever. You've got a hot pot here that you light and put sticks underneath. Here you've got a simmering almost area, and then the kettle goes on the end. It's really, really efficient, and I love cooking on it, I have to say. Right, what I'm going to do is a spring roll, and what I've got is the rice paper, which has just been moistened very, very lightly. Not too much, so it still says sort of fairly crisp. To that, I'm going to add a little bit of cucumber, then I've got a little bit of carrot, a bit of lettuce, and finally a little bit of mint. This is a very, very pungent herb here. And then what you need to do is put the fish on top and you rake it off with your chopsticks like that, like that and then all you need to do is just carefully roll it up and that is the perfect spring roll While putting down the Mekong enjoying my Vietnamese spring rolls the immense impact that food has on cultures all over the world really started to hit home